everyone suddenly makes their move, with Yuta instantly sprinting past Choso towards Yuji. Choso attempts to slow him down with a piercing bloodshot, but Naoya manages to interrupt the attack. Yuji springs away from Yuta, each being caught by surprise at the other's speed. As Choso wonders if they guessed his last move, he readies up his blood manipulation once again, but Naoya quickly strikes him before he can use it. Although he is unsure as to why Choso has the blood manipulation ability, Naoya remains unfazed by it, with the exception of piercing blood. He ends his explanation since the rest is obvious to him, telling Choso that it's now time for him to die. However, Choso's mood changes as he becomes serious and he asks Naoya if he thinks he will leave alive after he just tried to murder his little brother. It's, it's so funny, like Yuji's got like a, a crew of these jacked up ass brothers following him around, making sure that he doesn't die at the moment. I absolutely love it. <laughs> anyways, anyways, skipping away from the underpass, Yuji sprints toward a car, resting on its side, and leaps over it, with Yuta quickly running to the other side with his katana ready. However, Yuji grabs onto the car and transposes his direction, just barely dodging the attack. Yuta is left stunned since he thought he made contact, telling Yuji that he is just like Maki with his natural physical abilities. Yuji then punches a car towards Yuta, and since he knows that he can't win out in the open, tries to run towards a set of buildings. However, the car is suddenly thrown back above Yuji's head, stopping him instantly. Yuta asks Yuji if he is surprised since he doesn't look like the strong type. Yuji recognizes though the enormous amount of cursed energy pouring from him and realizes that the two are polar opposites. Which is, you know, like, hella cool, queen versus king type thing. I'd love to see, like, more hyped feats from, like, Rika and Yuta in general, and Sukuna as well, and Yuji, just so we can pair them up in this massive battle to see who would come out on top when they're going, like, full tit against each other. Honestly, like, let me know what you guys think down in the description below. I've always loved the idea of these two just going freaking at it for, like, hours on end. Kind of like a like a one-piece battle of, like, Akainu versus Aokiji, where they fought for, like, seven days on an island and changed the geography of that area. Like, I, I love that whole idea. Anyway, anyway. Yuta then reveals that while he has more cursed energy than Gojo, the teacher's six eyes allow him to reduce the cursed energy when he activates a technique to almost zero, allowing him to fight almost indefinitely. After Yuta says that he is done gassing up big Gojo, he sprints towards Yuji, who while overwhelmed, remembers Toto's words about an elite sorcerer's flow of cursed energy and it being difficult to read. Yuta then strikes and seems to make contact with the side of Yuji's head, but the student quickly recovers and recognizes that Yuta's body and katana are constantly surging with energy. He tells himself that the issue isn't his moves, but the fact that he is decisive with every strike and can reduce any damage he take to a minimum. He remembers Nanami's final words to him and tells Yuta that he can't, can't die, die yet. However, Yuta keeps on the offensive, and although Yuji dodges almost all of his strikes, one of them grazes his cheek and opens up a cart. He realizes that he needs to do something about Yuta's katana. He tells himself that he doesn't need to fear blades if he reinforces his body with cursed energy, but also can't overthink the situation, otherwise he'll end up dead. As he dashes towards a large SUV, he jumps inside the open window and spots a knife on the seat. He quickly picks it up before jumping out the opposite window and continuing on running. Yuta leaps over the hood and attacks him with his katana though, but Yuji uses the survival knife that he just picked up to block the strike. Yuta is taken aback at first and wonders where in the world did Yuji get a knife from, but quickly realizes that it must have been inside of the car. Yuji then lunges forward to close the gap and imbues the knife of cursed energy trying to fight back. He remembers Gojo's words about not relying on cursed tools to the detriment of his own cursed energy's control. As the clash continues, Yuji knows that he hasn't learned how to fight this way, and then in a quick flash, Yuta tells him that he is focusing too much on his katana, before raising it above his head and kicking him in the stomach, sending him reeling back. Yuji can't believe the power of his kick, but even still, he quickly recovers. Yuta then follows up with an even more powerful strike that breaks Yuji's knife and cuts into his stomach. However, Yuji used the momentum of Yuta's strike to lodge his sword into the ground. He then follows up and pins it down and breaks the blade with his foot, which is like insane by the way. I, I, I know this isn't a curse tool or anything, but still it had Yuta's cursed energy flowing through it and most likely protecting it in some kind of way. Even Yuta is surprised at first, but calms himself down while saying aloud that the fight was never going to be easy. Although Yuji's wound is deep, he tells himself that his vitals are intact and that both of them are now unarmed. But as he moves forward to strike, a large, ominous creature suddenly appears behind him and puts both of its hands around his head. Yuji is frozen in fear, and Yuta tells Rika that the two were just playing. Yuji, who was like obviously confused and doesn't know what to make of it or the name or what's going on, wonders if it's a Shikigami. 
As Yuji struggles, Yuta tells Rika to hold the student still. He then proceeds to calmly stab him in the chest with the broken katana. As blood starts to drip from Yuji's mouth, Yuta looks him in the eyes and apologizes. Inside of Yuji, Sukuna is completely caught off guard at first, but soon notices something and puts on his malevolent smile. 